Tony Granato during his playing days. You can see the career resume right there and uh, the newest inductee to the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. And we're fortunate enough to have him join us right now from the University of Wisconsin, where he's the head coach of the Badgers. Tony, congratulations on being uh, inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, how did you get the news? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, EJ. And, and hi, Billy. Uh, I got a call from Pat Kelleher just a, a few days ago, um, kind of out of the blue. Pat usually checks in every month to see how things are going in Wisconsin. And and uh, this one, he said, hey, uh, I got something special to tell you. And uh, he caught me by surprise. And when you hear something like that come out of uh, uh, the other side of the phone, you kind of, you know, you go through lots of emotions. And and, uh, you know, if you think of all of the people along the way that you're fortunate enough to play with, uh, your coaches, and most importantly, your family, because, you know, that's that's where our game started. It started in our basement. It started in our backyard uh, with all the brothers and sisters and the parents supporting it. So um, those are the th kind of things that ran through my mind when I got the call. All right, well, Tony, you just brought up your family, so this is a perfect segue for me into this question. I've known your family for a long time, being a good Chicago guy, you know, as, you, as you guys are from Downers Grove originally. How does one family get so good? I mean, in many ways, there are many other, there are some other good families of, of U.S. hockey, but in many ways, the Granados have almost elevated themselves to a level, could you say, almost by themselves. How, do, how did you and your family get so good at the game of hockey? Well, you know, I appreciate that nice compliment. There, there are just so many families in, in our game that, you know, um, you look up to as, as being really special. And for us and our family, like we, the only thing we knew about and the only thing we knew that each of us loved was the game of hockey. And so um, from the time we'd wake up till the time we went to bed, there was an interruption where we had to go to school. Uh, but <laughs> we were playing some sort of hockey. And, you know, mom and dad would shut the – shut the door and us three brothers live together. And as soon as they shut the door, you know, we pulled the mini sticks out and we start playing. And that's just, you know, what we did as kids. So um, it was nice to, to be able to experience the game of hockey um, with the people that you love, you know, my sister being able to play uh, and, and it, you know, for a long, long time, my brothers both playing elite level college following the year, the university of Wisconsin, my other brother, sister were always part of the hockey as well and, and you know so what uh, you know we've we're still part of it you know our kids play now um, my sister's kids play now our brother's kids so so it's just been part of our lives since since uh since we know it tony we're uh moving closer and closer towards uh the stanley cup final we have one team in the dallas stars waiting to see what happens with the islanders and lightning you played in a stanley cup final with the la kings going back to 1993 what do you remember about that run that year and and being in a final well i remember game seven in toronto when gretz had his three goals uh, that was the year that, that he had missed you know pretty much the first half of the year with a back injury there were rumors uh, and lots of people thinking that he wouldn't be able to return. Then he did return, and uh, we were kind of struggling as we had headed into playoffs, and then we had that great run. And what I remember is Gretz uh, coming to the to his best when we needed him. I remember the experience uh, um, before Game 7 when he took criticism that this might be the end of Wayne, and then him going out and not just playing a great game, but maybe, you know, as he said, maybe his greatest game ever. And so that feeling of, of having a chance to go to the Stanley Cup and showing up in the Montreal Forum a few days later to start game one, um, as a player, you remember the exact, you know, feeling that you had when you stepped out onto that ice. And we came up a little bit short. We had a great run. We lost three games in a row in overtime to Patrick Waugh. And, um, you know, sometimes you play well and you think you deserve better. And, and there's an answer on the other end of it. And their answer was Patty Waugh that year. And, and uh, but but my teammates and, and the guys they went to, to battle with, Kelly Rudy was in our net. Uh, every single player you remember for the, the, the sacrifices and the effort that they get, you know, gave and left out on that ice. And we came up a little bit short. But but still, I feel like we we left that rink uh, in Montreal when we did lose that proud. And, 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 you know, it's you never, you know, like losing, but you also respect the fact the other team beat you, but you still can feel like you were champions, and that's what I felt about that team. 
You're getting inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. One of the reasons is because you also played an awful lot for Team USA uh, in your college days, even you know during your pro days too. You were on one of the last U.S. national teams when that that year before the Olympics in '87, '88. What did it mean to you to represent your country as much as you did? Well, I in 1980, obviously every American player and athlete and person probably in our country remembers the significance of what that miracle team did for us. I was 16, uh, might have been maybe just 15, but I watched that game and I said, man, oh man, I'm going to do everything I can to someday wear a USA sweater. I don't know what level, I don't know where it's going to be, but that's my goal. And from that day forward, you know, I channeled all my energy and did everything I could. And fortunately enough, a couple years later, I was able to play on a world junior team. Um, and those are the guys, the, the Ruzioni's and the Suters and the Johnson's and Craig's and all those guys that were on that 80 team were my inspiration. So to have an opportunity to, to do it, you know, as a world junior and then continue to have different opportunities to represent your country. Um, there is uh, certainly uh, lots of great memories from that. And I'm very thankful. USA Hockey's done such a phenomenal job. And when we used to go to those world junior tournaments and world tournaments, you know, we were just a team that would have to just show up to, to make sure there were enough teams in the tournament. We weren't very deep as a country back then. Uh, we were kind of just getting up and running. That 80 team gave us the boost to give us the confidence and the growth uh, opportunities in front of us. And now you look at the tournaments that USA shows up for at any level, in any place. Um, they expect to win because we have what I think the, the most healthy uh, and the best hockey place to play and develop our players. So, so I'm very grateful to be one of the guys a long, long time ago, man, maybe wasn't so rosy and shiny to battle through it and be part of it and now watch it grow and develop into how special it is today. Tony, now you are the head coach at the University of Wisconsin. we got the NHL draft coming up. You've got a player on your team, Dylan Holloway, who's projected to be a first-round draft pick. Give us a little bit of a scouting report on this young guy. I'm going to tell you right now, the team that drafts him will be really, really happy. <laughs> I'll tell you, he came in as a 17-year-old last year, got on campus as a 17-year-old, uh, came from Alberta, played in the AJ, uh, a huge step to college hockey. Physically, no problem. Uh, understanding how to play the game the right way, no problem. So I think, uh, you know, he, he, he was about a point a game the last 14 games in college hockey last year as a freshman. You know, this year he's due for a breakout season where he could, you know, he could double his numbers. But he's a, a coachable kid. Uh, he's a worker. Um, you know, we're on the ice right now, and, and every day I look at him, and, and I know that someday, uh, real soon in their future, he's going to be a, an NHL player. And like I said, the team that does get him is going to going to be real happy that they got him. So I'm, I I would assume he'd be a tenth tenth to fifteenth pick, and uh, and you know I think he's got great upside that could be a, a really special player for a long time. Tony, thanks so much for taking the time today. And congratulations on, again on being inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. You certainly deserve it. I appreciate that, EJ and Billy. We'll see you guys. Have a great day.